Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Miranda and I will be your Enchantress of Avalon taking you on a journey into the lands mystical and into Avalon. And for this week's video I have chosen the topic of the Nine Morgans of Avalon or the Nine Sisterhood, the Ninefold Sisterhood of Avalon. These are the nine sisters that live and work on the Isle of Avalon. So let's get into a little bit about each of them. We don't have a lot of knowledge about most of them uh, can, because it in our original interpretation of them, which was, of course, Geoffrey of Monmouth, Svita Merlini, we only really get a very vivid description of Morgan. Although one of the other sisters is described as being uh, associated with music, and she's the only other one that we have a very specific and vivid description of. <clears throat> but in Kathy Jones' excellent book, I actually reviewed it on the blog earlier this week, on my, that is White Rose of Avalon that life. I have a review posted of it, Priestess of Avalon, Priestess of the Goddess. She does uh, delve deeper into working with each of the nine Morgans and describes them a little bit more in depth as separate figures. So Basically, I'm going to go over the eight as she describes them in cycling through the year a little bit. Uh, first of all, I'll start with Tyrono, and she is associated with the winter solstice, and she's associated with this classic uh, Caliage hag-like figure. Again, I, I do not know if I said that correctly, but um, it's a term in Irish folklore for this hag-like figure who is very very elderly and we have that interpretation of her and the associations as far as colors are silver and gray she's associated with the element of air she is associated with owls bu bu owls buzzards uh wind dragons she is a lady of air and uh, she is the holly woman. She is part of this very specific uh, winter solstice energy, this Yule energy. Then the next one that is described is, uh, is Thetis and she is uh, the maiden. She is a symbol of Imbolc which is our next holiday coming up. It's actually on Tuesday because it's celebrated usually February 1st or February 2nd. So Tuesday or maybe Wednesday. And she is also a lady of prophecy. She's associated with swans, the phoenix, the unicorn. And she's this very um, much a figure of renewal after the old year is die the old of the year is dying off the cold of the year is dying off and we're getting that burgeoning renewal for the springtime the next one is clitten and clitten is associated with the spring equinox she is a <clears throat> a lady of fire she is associated with the hare the cat and the fire dragon and she is associated with the colors green and gold she is also thought of as a hazel woman. Hazel being one of uh, the trees very associated with the springtime. So, yes. If you see me looking down, by the way, I'm just reading some notes here. Uh, after that, the next association we have is of Thetis. And Thetis is uh, associated with Beltane and the color red. She is associated with the Hawthorn, which is the ultimate May Day tree. That is the tree that is in full bloom on May 1st for Beltane, and it's the most associated with that particular holiday. She is associated with this archetype of a lover slash virgin, go slash, slash virgin goddess, so she has kind of a cross uh, symbolism there, and she is a god she's associated with sovereignty. She's associated with the mare, the horse, small and small birds. So she's very interesting. And again, that's getting into that Beltane vibe. And her associations are very similar to associations you would see with Rhiannon as she is worshipped at Beltane. So 
you could work with you know Thetis as this kind of elemental energy and Rhiannon and it's goddess energy in that time of year. <clears throat> Next we have Gliten and she is a lady of water and uh, the lady of the lake, lady of springs and wells. She is associated with the summer solstice, the element of water, colors blue and green. And she's also associated with nymphs, sprites, selkies, and mermaids. So she is that very watery figure. So we have that very sexual, watery figure with this particular figure. But both Thetis and Glitten are very sexual figures in the warm part of the year. Mm. The next one we go into is for uh, Lamas or Lunasa. We have uh, Glutonia, and she is a nurturer, a mother goddess figure, and uh, this ash woman. She is associated with the color gold, and as I said, with uh, Lamas, or it's also called Lunasa, and it, that would be the holiday that falls about August 1st. So this is the ending of summer and the burgeoning of the fall season and it is the first of three harvest ceremonies that were celebrated in ancient times and they're still celebrated by the modern <clears throat> pagans and witches today modern nature worshipers and nature embracers anyone who loves nature might celebrate these holidays <clears throat> now the next one we have is Morano, and she is associated with the element of earth. She is associated with the autumnal equinox. She is associated with the orchards and the beech tree. Associated with foxes, moles, badgers, the earth dragon, the black bird. And she is, again, this very autumnal figure. And she is that woman who is a scene about as like, a mature middle-aged woman you know not old and not young at all not old but not young she is that middle-aged figure probably a mother with children who are grown this kind of very uh, put together figure someone who's lived through life and is very stable <clears throat> and then the final of the eight outside of Morgan Le Fay herself, which I will talk about, of course, is uh, is Mezo, and she is associated with the Banshee or the Banshees. She is associated with crones. She is the Lady of Samhain. She is a you woman. She's associated with the animals, the sow, the bat, and the hawk. And of course, she is associated with the color black as being a Samhain and Halloween figure. So as you go through all of these figures, we could see them, as Kathy Jones describes it, as being different phases of a woman's life. They each appear as different ages, starting with uh, the, starting with uh, Thetis and being uh, the Lady of Imbolc. She is the youngest of them. And then as you go around, they get slightly older. So we have, then Clitten is a little bit older than that. The burgeoning, she's now, you know, in puberty and she's the burgeoning of sexuality. Then we have Thetis, who is that lover virgin concept of, she is now in that lover figure. We have Glitten, who is again associated with the maturing of being a woman and that's why we have all those watery associations because that's sexuality that's burgeoning ability to be a mother and desire to be a mother to where we get to glutinia and she is the motherly figure the actual mother then morano is middle age mezo is the uh older woman but not very old and then we have, she's the crone, but not ancient. And then we have, finally, the first one I talked about, uh, and that is Tyrano. And she is associated with 
this very ancient, very, very old woman, 70 plus years of age. She's a crone plus. She's even older. She is the truly wise, wise woman. And uh, then we have, of course, Morgan Le Fay herself. And she is the center of everything. Where they are these elemental fairy women, fairy queens. She is that, plus she is a goddess in her own right. And she is in that center space. She is the one that they orbit around, so to speak. She is the one that has her hand in all of the seasons. And she can be associated with so many things. And it can be said that the Morgans are either individual figures or aspects of her. And she is associated with the color violet. And some also say sapphire, and I associate her with both of those colors. She is keeper of the mysteries. She's an enchantress. She is the apple woman, as Avalon is, of course, the Isle of Apples. She her she's associated with crows and ravens, and one of her sacred symbols is a cauldron. She is the most powerful, the most beautiful, and the most intelligent of all of them. She is their leader, and while they all are important and have their own abilities, she is the one that we get the very specific description of from the get-go. She's the one that carries through all of the Arthurian legends as this is adapted into deeper and deeper Christian times. Uh, do you want to mention, because I did mention one of them is described at, by Geoffrey of Monmouth as having a special ability as being associated with music. So let me just see. And look, it, she would be, I believe it's, Thetis is associated with music. And all of them are associated with prophecy, music in some way, dance, uh, healing, skills with herbs, sensuality, beauty. They all have associations in these different aspects of life. I do highly recommend getting this book if you can because it is absolutely incredible and it will give you so much that you can work with. So, yes, we just have the one that's actually described as playing musical instruments in Vita Marlini. And I believe it's Thetis. She's described in this way. Otherwise, we just get a very vivid description of Morgan. And if you want more information on these aspects of Morgan or the other of the nine, please, please read the great book by Kathy Jones, Priestess of Avalon, Priestess of the Goddess, and I also am posting a blog post today on whitewordsofavalon.life that will have more information about the nine Morgans of Avalon. So I hope you have an awesome week, and I will see you next Sunday.